The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. G'day everyone, thanks for attending uh, the StorageCraft webinar today. Obviously our theme is on ransomware, so really um, I guess what I'll be showing you is why you shouldn't need to worry. Uh, we've got your data protected and obviously a big part of that is, is being able to recover should this type of event happen. So my name is Carl Thompson, um, I've been with StorageCraft for about four and a half years now, currently based in New Zealand, um, however I've uh, been based in our Sydney office and uh, look after our whole APAC region um, from a technical sales engineering perspective. So what is the problem really we're trying to address? Obviously things like ransomware, uh, you know, server outages, problems going wrong, um, and why business continuity planning is so critical. So what we're seeing in the market is this cause of, where this unplanned cause of downtime is really around application operational errors. I mean, ransomware is going to fit right across that 80%, but um, it's, it's security breaches, it's people making mistakes, it's updates causing problems, um, it's people doing things uh, that they shouldn't be, um, ransomware, all that kind of stuff. Far more likely to happen than something like a hardware failure, um, a power issue, and in fact a natural disaster is just 3%. So really 97% of the time we can have the ability to rapidly recover back on site, you know, providing we've architected our solution in an appropriate way for recovery to another device. So some of the challenges we're seeing is that 85% of critical systems are not backed up adequately. Now what that means is that there's backup products out there that do file-based backup and when you go to recover them, you know, you have to reinstall Windows before you can put the files back, etc. So that is a real challenge, people not backing up systems adequately. Another big challenge is, um, you know, solutions that are capturing the entire system or an image might not be doing what's called a VSS aware backup. So what that means is when they go to recover that server before the problem happened, you know, the databases don't align properly or there's an issue where they don't match the logs or there's inconsistencies and then that requires more work to fix things. So backing up systems appropriately for what they do is really important. The other challenge is data growth rates. As, as everyone knows, there's just more and more data now and obviously being able to store that data is a challenge, but being able to back it up appropriately is also a problem as well. So a lot of technologies will just back up once a day because the backup takes a long time. They want to run that in the evening. It's going to slow the system down. So with Shadow Protect, what we do is we can back up every 15 minutes by tracking these the changes in real time. So backups are less than 30 seconds generally, um, extremely fast and no disruption. So we'll talk a bit about that. But then the other alarming thing is that up to 40% of backup restores fail. So what that's telling me is that people aren't testing their backups. And obviously if you don't have an easy way to do that, that is a real struggle to do that or it's really time consuming. So we've got automated ways to achieve that and that's what I'd like to show you today. But last year, uh, ransomware damages reached $5 billion. So this is a problem that's not going away. These people are making money. They're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep finding new ways. Obviously, we need to keep up to date with, you know, our um, protection technologies such as, you know, firewalls and antivirus, malware, that type of stuff. But ultimately, we need to have a last line of defense in place, which is your backup and recovery. So... Obviously, um, the storage craft recovery solution leverages our Shadow Protect software, and obviously that starts with a reliable backup. We've got centralized management for our partners to centrally manage all of their customers from one console. We want to replicate off-site, which we'll talk a bit about, but the whole thing is pivoting around recovery. That has to be the most important focus when we're deploying a backup solution. We need to be thinking from the outset, what is the recovery process we're going to need to do and ensure that that is being considered as part of that, that project. And having something that works across physical and virtual environments and you know has cloud-based recovery is obviously all part of the solution. So again, Shadow Protect uh, SPX uh, stands for Shadow Protect Cross Platform. It's, it's basically for people familiar with Shadow Protect, it's version six. Uh, this includes the same capabilities across Windows and Linux environments. So taking a look at an infrastructure on site, you've got your production servers and workstations. We've got the Shadow Protect backup software, which installs into those virtual environments that will provide the backup um, facilitation across any, we support over 12 different hypervisors um, and physical servers. 
So really important enabling fast, frequent backups. So one of the things by having the Shadow Protect agent installed into the virtual machine, that first and foremost means we can get a VSS consistent backup. It also means that it's a guest aware backup within the machine. We're not doing a hypervisor snapshot. So there's gonna be no stun or disruption to users. We can back up very frequently. Um, every 15 minutes would be 96 times per day. That's nearly 700 backups a week. So we generally have a machine on the network, such as a backup server. This will run what's called our image manager software. So image manager is gonna automatically verify those backups. It will periodically, by default, every seven days, recheck all of the backups to make sure that something like ransomware or BitRot hasn't corrupted them. Um, it will do consolidation and retention. And then we have um, file and folder recovery or disaster recovery options available from there. So from a ransomware perspective, some of the really good things to think about at this point is when we're creating those jobs to use encryption, we want to encrypt those backups to prevent ransomware from accessing the contents of those backups. So quite often what we're seeing now with ransomware is not only will they lock you out of your data, but if you don't pay it, they'll threaten to sell that data to you know, publish it on the internet. So we want to encrypt that backups and keep the contents of that secure. That does not stop ransomware from corrupting those images or reinfecting them. It just means they can't read what's inside them. So we need to then think more about the protection. So on the network, we really want to disable SMB version one, that is uh, known issues around the security of SMB version one. We want to create a hidden network share for the backups. We don't want the backup share being broadcasted around the network. That's where ransomware is likely to find it. Um, and we want to lock down that network share. We want to check the share permissions and the file security or NTFS permissions of that share so that only the Shadow Protect can authenticate that. They don't want any other users mapping network drives or having access to those backups because again, the last thing we want is ransomware to infect those backup images. So obviously if a server crashes, we've got our virtual boot technology. This can instantly virtualize any Shadow Protect backup directly on that backup server, or it could virtual boot directly back into Hyper-V or VMware environments. So we can virtualize directly off the backup. Now if your backup's two, three terabytes in size, virtual boot boots straight off that image within minutes. So we don't have to sit there and wait and restore this data, that would take too long. So fantastic included solution for rapid recovery. Image Manager now includes for free at no additional cost a technology called Head Start Restore. This allows you to pre-stage backups instead of virtual boot. This will actually, as the backups come in and they get verified, we'll push them out into a standby Hyper-V or VMware virtual machine. So we can actually have like a, basically a, a cold standby of that VM. And this is really cool how it works. You configure what's called a lag window. So you might set it to eight hours or a day. And what that means is it will restore everything continuously and you leave it running. As a backup comes in, it gets verified, it'll wait for a day before it pushes that in. Now what that means is that lag window becomes kind of like your reaction time to say, oh, we've just had a ransomware, we've just had a problem, we wanna quickly go back maybe two hours ago before it happened. So because you've got that lag window of maybe eight hours, you can go in there and say, oh, I wanna finalize to three hours ago or, or two and a half hours ago, right before the problem happened. And all it has to do is restore perhaps that last six hours. And it's only the last six hours of incremental changes. So it can turn that round within minutes. So again, the pre-staging allows us to do the, the full restore of all of that data ahead of any type of situation happening. It's a fantastic solution for migrations, uh, but also for a standby virtual machine enabling rapid failover. So you've got two different options uh, on site. And then obviously, the next most important thing to do is get off-site replication. So Image Manager includes for free what's called intelligent FTP replication. And this works best with what's called a continuous incremental schedule that I spoke of earlier. So a continuous incremental schedule will send that base image once or we could manually seed it and then it just sends incrementals going forward. And it's at a sector level, very small incremental backups, very easy to get off site. And because we're doing that over a secure FTP connection, it is also very isolated from your on-prem network. So you know, if your SMB network or your local network gets infected, it's uh, very unlikely that it's gonna be able to then authenticate into a remote FTP site and start infecting that. So it gives us a second copy of those images in an isolated network uh, somewhere else over the internet, 
And what that means is that if you know your backups get affected, we could pull them back or we could recover in that off-site location. So with Shutter Protect, you can replicate to your own remote site or a lot of our uh, resellers will set up their own remote FTP services. You could send it into Amazon S3 for archival. Um, or you could leverage a StorageCraft cloud services. Now the StorageCraft cloud services is predominantly built for disaster recovery. So this is kind of like a head start restore in our cloud, which basically if your whole site had a catastrophic failure, you know, natural disaster or ransomware really caused a real havoc, perhaps you would fail over in the StorageCraft cloud. And there you'd, you know, IP6 site to site VPN, enabling rapid failover in the cloud. And once you've, you know, rebuilt the on-prem environment, we can we can basically sync those running VMs back on-prem very easily. So a lot of different options around where you want to recover, even in storage craft cloud, your own cloud, uh, you're a reseller and you want to have your own infrastructure. The fantastic thing is um, if you're wanting to build your own remote site, there's no extra licensing. As long as you've got the Shadow Protect licensing um, sorted for the original virtual machines, um, that's basically all you need to, to protect for. So Shadow Protect, um, will be licensed on-prem, uh, your image management, head start, virtual boot, and offsite replication are all included. And obviously, um, storage craft card could be an extra add-on for that premium recovery. I'm actually, just jumping back a couple of slides, I just made a note uh, around the ransomware. So when we're talking replication, uh, the, some of the things that are built in here that, that really give us peace of mind with the ransomware is that all image uh, all images, all the backups are verified before being replicated. So Image Manager has built in MD5 and CRC verification. If those images are corrupt, they will never be sent off site. Secondly, we only send the images once. So if we've sent a backup image which subsequently gets corrupt, there's no further sync. So if something goes wrong on site, it will not then go and infect my remote copy of those backups. And again, using a secure FTP protocol enables the remote copy to be very isolated from the on-site SMB network. So very unlikely that they're going to, you know, as long as those, you've got that authentication and that security of that F remote FTP site, which again would be running Image Manager to re-verify at that end, uh, it's very isolated. And it's only going to send the very specific storage craft backup images, you know, once they've been verified. So this ultimately offers a second copy of the backup images in a second isolated, you know, offsite network. So I believe that's really important. Now, um, the virtual boot technology. So this is the on-prem rapid virtualization that's included free with Shadow Protect. You've got the ability to virtualize straight back into vSphere, straight back into your Hyper-V production, or if you had a dedicated backup server, that could be running Hyper-V or even the, the free Oracle Virtual Box, which just installs into Windows. This is fantastic for testing and verifying backups. Our Image Manager software has a built-in advanced verification where it'll actually boot up your backup images every day or every week or every month. It'll boot them up one at a time. Once they're all booted up, it takes a screenshot of each one and destroys it. And it will then send you an email saying, hey, we've just tested all of your backups. You know, you should be able to see the login screen that, that Windows is booting on all these machines. So very powerful automated free way to test your backups. Um, it's great for system recovery or system migration. It's included entirely free. Uh, the, the VMware solution actually won the gold award in 2016 at VMworld. Uh, it's fully certified as VMware ready and allows vSphere to talk directly to the Shadow Protect backup. So fantastic built-in technology uh, native in the VMware and also with the Hyper-V virtual boot hypervisors. So some of the key things is that it's a consistent sector-based backup. So two things there, consistent. You'll see here uh, one of the services that are running as part of Shadow Protect is the volume snapshot provider. This allows our technology to talk directly to Exchange, SQL, SharePoint, Active Directory, any VSS aware application and get a very high level consistent backup, which means that our recovery is going to be in a good state. The other thing is that the Shadow Protect backups are in a sector level. So it can be one eighth the size of a comparable CBT or block based technology and significantly smaller than other technologies that back up files every time something changes. So at a sector level is the smallest measurement of disk, not aware of any other backup technology truly at that sector level. So this enables us to have far greater retention on site. We don't have this deduplication concern to worry about and it means our replication off site is very manageable. Um, because it's such a small incremental change set. The next step is uh, being able to frequently back up throughout the day. Shadow Protect defaults to hourly. Because there's no disruption, we're not worried about 
causing a problem during the day. We want to back up frequently throughout the day. We don't want to lose a whole day's worth of stuff if something happens with a ransomware environment. Share Protect can be increased to as frequent as every 15 minutes if you would like. And the important part of that is zero impact. It does not disrupt the users while they're working. It's an in-guest snapshot. It doesn't stun or hang or pause the VMs when backups run, which enables us to do this frequently throughout the day um, without any disruption. And that is really important. The ability with virtual boot and head start restore to rapidly recover within minutes, having support across physical and virtual environments so you don't have different technologies running to perform backup and recovery. Uh, the image manager intelligent management that facilitates your replication of site is, is included, as well as our centralized management. So this is our shadow control dashboard, which gives you visibility of everything and can manage your ITCM alerts and, and reporting, etc. So one of the other components we touched on briefly was the storage craft cloud services. This gives you the ability to recover everything from file and folder recovery to full virtualization and instant failover of an entire site and network in an easy to use self-service online portal. So you can know that your data is safe and always available in our distributed, highly scalable, fault tolerant cloud built specifically for disaster recovery. Our privacy and security measures ensure that you can only access your stored backup images. And you can customize the cloud to fit your needs. So whether your IT environment is small and straightforward or you're a larger site with a complex environment, you can choose the appropriate service levels based on what you need to do for a low cost and full control over the cloud. You can centrally manage and monitor all of your cloud service accounts as well as fail over in a disaster without any third party intervention. So you don't have to call us, you can rapidly perform the recovery yourself. Another really appropriate solution that we have on the ransomware topic is our cloud backup for Office 365 and G Suite. So back when you used to run your own email server, you probably used to back it up. We've moved into a highly scalable, uh, fault tolerant cloud. But you know, your backup and your granular recovery becomes questionable. So the storage craft has a solution, it's cloud to cloud, so you don't need to worry about any bandwidth or storage on-prem. We'll store it in uh, Amazon S3 or in your own Azure storage, and we provide uh, that all through the 24 seven accessible portal. It's all encrypted backups that happen every eight hours, so three times a day we do an API call and we back that up. Again, single management in our portal where you've got the ability to instantly search an entire tenancy for mail, contacts, calendars, OneDrive, or SharePoint data and instantly recover it back. So within seconds, we can restore files or an entire user account, uh, and you've got full reporting and auditing. So another fantastic solution, you know, Office 365, with things like OneDrive and SharePoint is, is encouraging a lot more bring your own devices. People are working a lot more remotely or from home. And this is where it's starting to open up your data at risk of an infection or corruption or malicious activity. So having those backed up with an easy accessible way to frequently recover is very important. One final solution I'd like to cover today is StorageCraft OneBlocks. So this is a new enterprise-based solution that we're bringing into the market, into the mid-market space that's enabling us to scale out. As we've got larger storage requirements, um, it's becoming complex to do forklift upgrades. So we can provide easy to consume storage and a NAS appliance, which can be set up in minutes. It's got enterprise features such as dedupe, compression, encryption, and replication. You can put your own hard disks in. So whether it's spinning disk or flash drives, it allows you to take advantage of market rates for very affordable storage. And it basically, because it scales, each disk will grow that entire storage pool, whether it's a VMware data store or SMB shares for backups or primary storage, we can grow that each time you add a disk or add another um, appliance into that ring of storage. And one of the cool things, particularly around the ransomware theme, is that it does by default 10 seconds uh, continuous data protection. So that offers immutable snapshots. Inherently, this uh, technology leverages underlying object storage, so we don't have the uh, implications of RAID or degradation if a disk was to fail. But how object storage works is that we can make snapshots immutable so that they cannot be infected by ransomware. And this is a really fantastic solution actually to complement your backups. You might have these immutable snapshots that just run for over spanning over maybe one to two weeks at maximum. But that means if anything was to happen to those backups, we can quickly revert back to before that problem happened. So OneBlock is a really powerful solution 
uh, in that space. Now, just before um, I finish up, because we have gone over time, one of the handouts I've attached here, um, specifically focusing on our Shadow Protect solution for anyone using Shadow Protect today, is best practice in midgetating um, ransomware attacks. Now, this is obviously the focus here is on the backup images um, to secure them. Um, and some of the key things here, which I have covered off, um, is obviously encrypting those backup images, protecting the network shares, um, but also restricting the, the permissions on those shares themselves as well at the file security level. Um, review SMB1 and look at turning that off on your network. Make sure you're doing cloud off-site replication um, where you're replicating the backups to a remote site and then obviously basic endpoint protection and patching considerations. So there's a great guide that I've attached as a handout to this webinar today. But basically, um, you know, thank you for attending the webinar today. Um, in conclusion, you know, your data is your most valuable asset. Having a robust DR plan is an absolute must for companies of all sizes. So if you can't restore quickly, your backups may have little value to you. Thank you for attending this webinar today. Contact us to find out more uh, or if you'd like to see a demo on any one of the products we've talked about today.